my name is Rick, also known as your faithful narrator. Welcome to episode 18 of my Sunless Seas of Mariner Let's Plays. When we last left off, we had just discovered the island of Nuncio, which is apparently run by retired members of the Postal Service. They told us the next location on our quest for my father's bones. The people in the bar seem nice enough. Amazing what you get for a penny stamp. Delicate bottles lowered down chimneys on a rope. Do not fold under any circumstance letters curled through a narrow slot. Rattling, groaning crates brought back to the same address every day for 22 days running. The windows they pried open, the servants they bribed, the delivery surcharges they paid out of their own salaries just to get rid of one more packet. It is hard to tell which they hate more, the senders of mail or the recipients. Stands to reason, if the message was a welcome one, they'd tell the other fellow in person, reflects the hairless postwoman. Ask why the local currency consists of rats. Two strings of rats for a pint of ale. Three strings for wine. Five for the to tolerable brandy under the bar. Scarcity is not an issue. The hairless postwoman at the end of the bar smiles mirthlessly. Or maybe it's just the lack of eyebrows that does it. Long enough carrying the things around, you get into the habit, she says. Then she tells you that if you stay out late enough, you'll see some of the postmen making a procession to the center of the island, stringing up rats around the statue like yuletide decorations, in prayer to an ancient deity of this place. From the coughing and choking elsewhere in the pub, you'd guess this is a story they often tell to newcomers. You've gained a friendship with the postman. Uh, ask why the hairless postwoman is hairless. You know, I don't know her that well yet. Uh, ask about that big statue in the center of the island. If there were a guidebook for visitors, it would have to be the first entry. The Monumental Postman. Oh, that. It's all of us, isn't it? Sort of the spirit of the island. Most of them don't seem troubled for more of an explanation than that, though the hairless postwoman tells you it didn't always look like a fallen London postman at all, that it used to have a different face and a more old-fashioned outfit. You've gained another Nuncio cultivated friendships with the postmen. Ask how they all occupy themselves all day. There must be more than this. Dead letter office. Big building, center of town. Hard to miss. You can work there too if you want. It's not clear whether this is a generous offer or a threat. Uh, you've been invited to serve. Uh, your cultivating friendships with postmen hasn't changed because it's higher than three. Okay, ask to borrow a uniform. If you were to fit in here, you'll need one. Didn't know I was concerned about fitting in here, but suddenly I want to. Look, but not touch. I'm pretty sure that was meant to be look, but do not touch. I can't see why it wouldn't be. <laughs> and I, as your faithful narrator... Just faithfully report the things that are written wrong sometimes. I don't know how else to put it. They're polite, even apologetic, about your request. You're welcome here, and welcome to take shifts at the dead letter office, but you cannot wear the uniform unless you were a postal employee back in fallen London. Regulations. Blunt Thomas lets you have a look at his uniform jacket, at least. Neat stitching, gilded buttons, a thin but dignified circle of braid at the collar. Inside, a patch that goes over the heart, stitched with six red letters. You can't read it, but it makes your eyes itch and your scalp feel like burning. Ah, now I've gained a nuncio cultivated friendships. Uh, back to the docks. Leave the warmth of the blotter for now. Uh, all right, met a few people, got some of the broad brush strokes of the place. Uh, I feel confident enough to assemble a port report now and 
have some feel for what I was talking about. Most of the in inhabitants were Londoners once, but that doesn't mean they are now. Uniform behavior. Cataloging all the peculiarities of the place takes many pages. The tailor who imports gilt buttons and braid just to be able to keep everyone's uniform in condition. The fashion of wearing a post bag with nothing inside. Wearing it open. Wearing it upside down. Torn apart or as a hat. Wearing it in any way that will show it doesn't have letters in it. Then there are the sitting rooms, papered in cancelled stamps. The bergamot, pomegranate, curd non toast. The commerce in rat corpses. The hatred of cats. The absolute custom against ever issuing a paper invitation for any event, no matter how formal. It's the familiarity of the not quite Londonness of the place that makes it all so odd. I now have a port report. And I can still explore along the beach. There's a long stretch of shale dotted with washed up kegs and barrels and smaller flotsam. Flotsam? Jetsam and flotsam. It's shifty going. The rocks slip and slither underfoot, but you keep your balance. Um, uh, I'm not... Collect material for the dead letter office? I'm not super into that. Argue with the man holding a broom. He is determined. He keeps shoving letters back into the sea. The sea keeps shoving them back. I see no reason to argue with the man. Uh, I think I will assist the man holding a broom. Both of you together still won't achieve anything, but maybe he'll feel better. Hey, I figure at this rate, we won't achieve anything at twice the rate. Surprisingly soothing. In the long term, what you're doing won't make the slightest bit of difference. Every sodden bit of paper you fling out to sea will come back in a few hours. But for now, you manage to clear a little patch of shore, a few feet on each side. The stones are bare, as they should be. Your companion turns his head towards the sound of your work and gives you a little nod. Uh, <laughs> I had no way of knowing it was going to say that. It's just the thing you say about oceans. An occurrence your nuncio learned in postal secrets quality is now one, aware of flotsam and jetsam. I, I keep laughing because I keep predicting things I'm about to see in the game. But of course, unless you're reading along with the game, which why would you be? You wouldn't know why I keep laughing unless I explain it to you. I tend to over-explain things too much. <laughs> You've lost five terror. We needed that. We really did. Uh, I could rescue a dripping parcel. I could study the odd currents here. I'm going to rescue a dripping parcel. The dripping is probably seawater. Probably. I hope it's not blood. Shiny. Drowning pearls. Dozens of them. And an explanation of how they were harvested that turns the hair. The divers lost among the deep coral. The beasts that had to be fought off during harvesting. The growing terror aboard ship. All that has been done was done according to your lordship's will, concludes the letter writer. In anger, in pride, in unquestioning submission? Impossible to say. Gained fragments, gained all that terror right back, and now we have 20 drowning pearls, which is useful in a way. Uh, I would, I don't know, <laughs> I would maybe trade that for the terror. Study the odd currents here. Well, since I can still do it, I'm going to. The water that brings Flotsam ashore does not follow the usual patterns. A straightforward challenge. On all sides, you make a complete circuit of the island. The whole shoreline is alike. All of it is covered in debris. All of it washing steadily inland from every direction. Not the work of some directional current. It's more as though the whole Untersee were draining into Nuncio. Except, of course, that force did not affect your ship when you came this way. It does not stop ships leaving. Evidently, it only works on the post. <laughs> and perhaps drags postmen along with them? By implication? Am I reading too much into that? 
Uh, we are out of here. Um, shops? Oh yes, shops. Shipyard, no. Finally, at long last, long, long last, let's go back the way we came, let's dive under the ocean, and then let's head north for a bit. We've got the fuel, we've got the supplies. Uh, we're a terror can withstand a, a little bit. Oh, well, there's a rat barge trapped in a vortex. I don't want to go in the vortex or be shot by a rat barge. You know, can I go under water right here? What's wrong with this? Nothing. Please be treasure. Please be treasure. In fragments. Those look like rocks to me. Fed the crew. You ungrateful so and so's. How dare you feed the crew? Ooh, what's this? Is that something we need? An underwater settlement to the southwest. Oh, torpedo components. We needed that. South and west. Oh, I recognize this. It's, uh,. It's the creature from Dune. It's the giant sandworm. <laughs> right? I need an underwater current here. Oh, I've discovered Nook. 50 fragments gained. Ooh, uh, what can we do in Nook? Can we drop off any crap? Because <laughs> that's kind of getting to be a problem. Oh. Uh, Underwater settlement to the west. Oh, it's right. Yeah, look, I see it. We can only do so many things at a time. Battle? No. Dock. The edge of Nook. A gap in this colossal Z monster's throat has been forced open with thick heart metal beams. Oh, it's kind of excited. So what are we going to find at Nook? Any shops? Ooh. We could actually use a couple more torpedo components. Uh, seeing as how we go through them. Fuel and supplies are cheap here. I can, I can buy Stygian Ivory. Well, I mean, they're not cheap here, but they're relatively cheap compared to other places in the world. Wow, this place is great. The Yanning Ma, a scattered assembly of traders, smugglers, and shoppers. But on to the story. That's what we're here for, is the stories. A gap in this colossal Z monster's throat has been forced open with thick heart metal beams. They strain under the pressure, but hold. As you pass through, your submarine lights pass over a message carved in the floating piece of some Unfortunate's hall, beyond is nook, beyond is freedom, beyond is... The rest is scratched out. I can enter nook. Water presses against the airlock door. The breathing and slithering of the beast gives it the rhythm of a drumbeat. Trespasser in freedom. You don your heavy diving suit and give the order to cycle the airlock. Water rushes in and you begin the slow swim down into the port. It soon becomes obvious that you are overdressed for the occasion. The people of Nook swim and breathe in the cloudy ma water with no apparent discomfort. Most are naked, with just a few clad in rotten rags that stream from their skin, with no concern for modesty. None will communicate with you, if they even can. Those who acknowledge your presence just laugh silently at your bulky suit and unnecessary air hose. You'll need a different approach. Your occurrence, a taste of freedom, is now one. Uh, I can try again. I can descend naked into Nook. I am going to descend naked into Nook. At least you're unlikely to run into anyone you know. 
Not unless they live in a giant monster from Dune. You undress. Every button, every stitch. The door opens. Ice-cold water rushes upwards. Instincts <laughs> holds your mouth shut. Ten seconds. Twenty seconds. Your lungs burn, holding in that last gulp of air. Your legs thrash. You can't hold it in. It escapes. You're choking on water. It forces its way into your lungs, the taste of burning salt, suffocating every attempt to gasp, scream, or... Then, through the exhaustion and panic, you realize you're breathing. It's hard work. Your lungs fight against the weight. It's enough. You can tolerate it, at least for now. The liberal application of wine will make this process easier. In future, bring a cask. In future? Oh. It's not me. The beast quivers with distaste at your trespass. The waves are flecked with light. Uh, I can do a number of things. The ruptured throat. A torn, pinned back cavity in the flesh wall offers access to the city's monstrous host. Razor sharp teeth the size of buildings jut from fatty, garnet red flesh. Many teeth have been quarried out into homes, barricaded by scraps of wood from shipwrecks. I can swim upwards to the Great Ma, I can attempt to mingle with the Nook folk, I can compile a port report. I can take from the weak. There is only one law here. Survival of the fittest. A high-risk challenge. 15% chance of success. Forget it. <laughs> Just no way. Um, attempt to mingle with the Nook folk. They may be friendlier now that you're fashionably undressed. Lost in freedom. They acknowledge your presence, but little more. Most shrink back, assuming you mean harm. Others deliberately swim just above you in a crude attempt at intimidation. They carry bone knives or tooth-tipped spears. A few gesture to you in welcome, invitation. It is unclear. The slightly glutinous water makes speech impossible, so the natives have developed a language of signs. You can interpret the most basic. A finger pulled across the throat, for example, is one of the more polite invitations to depart. Okay, I'm taking it that didn't really go super well. Let's swim upwards to the Great Ma. I can gaze up through the Ma. I can join some tooth miners. I can investigate an etched tooth house. Um... A twitching cathedral of ivory, flesh, and decay. The maw curves far enough to be swallowed by the darkness of the Z. Entire shipwrecks have been mulched between hooked teeth that dwarf London's mightiest monuments. Gaze up through the maw? Sure. Not many sailors have seen the Z from this angle. Sounds scary, but... Crunching, writhing beauty. Light glitters where the false stars shine on the surface of the Z, framed by the Ma's dormant teeth. How ancient is this creature? What happens if it swallows? You've gained a terror, which is not as much as I was expecting. Uh, I can join some tooth miners uh, with a 30% chance of success. Pass. Investigate an etched tooth house. A flinty latitudinarian. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps its upper cavities filled with compressed air, allowing a number of activities otherwise impossible in watery nook. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. What's the downside? A comment or a like is a good way to let me know it. If you'd like to support my small channel, tell a friend. Anyone that likes steampunk, Victorian England, or audiobooks might like this. Thanks for watching.